Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jack Dorsey, Oprah Winfrey, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos each have their own routines that have helped them achieve incredible success. While not all are necessarily healthy, for example Buffett's love for McDonald's breakfast, I wanted to put what they and many other highly successful people do to the test in my own life. So I decided to challenge myself by doing many habits that have commonly been identified as rich habits. Now in order to stay consistent in building the habits, I initially chose to commit to doing them for 30 days to give them time to see a measurable outcome of their cost and benefit, after which I would go through a process to decide which I wanted to keep. One thing I noticed was that most of these habits and routines are done early in the day for those who have achieved success, often as part of their morning routine. This actually made sense as many of the routines have greater benefits early in the day, something I'll be delving into the reason for as we go through them. So with that said, let's take a look at the first habit, which was to wake up early. I generally consider myself as someone who is able to wake up relatively early, especially as I have kids in the house. However, the habit here wasn't just to wake up early, but rather wake up at times that the average person doesn't do. So I sought to do this by working out how much time I needed to complete my morning routine before the rest of my family was awake. I initially chose to wake up at 5am and I can't deny it proved quite awkward to fit in my schedule, so initially getting up was just something of a struggle. The problem was that beyond the change to my regular routine, I found I wasn't able to get adequate rest affecting my general performance through the day and meaning I'd make mistakes in tasks that were usually routine for me. I chose to change this to 5.30am which I found was better in alignment with my schedule and ensured I'd get the little extra rest I needed. While I understand and appreciate 30 minutes may not seem like a lot, the difference it made was pretty huge for me as the mistakes I found I was making before were no longer a problem. To be frank, I felt like my usual self again. Now the main motivation for me to wake up early was I wanted time to myself before other responsibilities in my life demanded it. And in truth, while it's difficult to wake up early, even today despite having gotten used to it, in reality it's a decision I feel has helped me in numerous ways. First is that it helps me ensure that I have the time I need to complete some of the other habits I'm going to go through in this video, but in addition it mostly helps me to have the quiet time to myself to ease into the day. I really can't stress the importance of this as someone who is naturally introverted and has anxiety. I consider this time critical for me, even sacred, something I always protect as much as I can for my well-being. I can't deny that initially I felt slightly guilty as it seems selfish of me to demand time to myself, but in truth in doing so I've found that it's actually one of the best decisions I've made for my family, as I'm simply in a better frame of mind to give them greater support or attention when with them. But getting back to the habits I've built, one thing I do in the morning when alone is I start off with meditation. I can't stress enough how much meditation has benefited my life both from a spiritual and health perspective, beyond it having calming effects on my state of mind and helping me ground myself in the present. It serves me particularly well in helping me to start my day in absolute calm and relaxation. Again, as mentioned earlier, I struggle with anxiety, so having this time to myself and doing some meditation helps immeasurably. To give some context, according to ScienceDaily.com, it was found in a study conducted in 2018, even a single session of mindfulness meditation can help you cope with anxiety. Look, meditation has been shown to be highly effective with stress and anxiety, something which for me has helped me manage them effectively in my own life and allowed me to approach problems and challenges with a fresh perspective and greater clarity. Beyond this, meditation has actually helped me focus my mind on the priorities for my day something which has been further confirmed as a benefit in studies. The numerous benefits of meditation and the simple act of doing some form of it really makes it something that I suggest to anyone and everyone out there. Meditation has helped me set my state to be productive in my time when testing it as part of this exercise, and honestly, I don't actually go out of my way to do it for too long. During the morning I'll spend around 10-15 to 15 minutes meditating something I also aim to do in the evening at the end of the day. Some meditate for hours and if they can fit it into their day then great, but for most it's simply impractical 
but there's no excuse not to do just 10 minutes at a time. I'm busy! Now, one thing I did during the 30 days after meditating was to get in a workout. I'm sure I don't need to explain the benefits of getting exercise to you, as it's a fundamental aspect of our general health and more important than ever in an environment where we get limited opportunities to exercise during the day. Something I've struggled to stay consistent in myself despite generally trying to take care of myself. There's no doubt that the biggest benefit I had by incorporating exercise in my daily routine was I ensured I committed to doing exercise every day, which was really important to ensure that I didn't take days off. Probably the best thing about doing the workout in the morning for me was it had great benefits on my mental health which was down to the fact that it triggered the release of endorphins that have positive effects on your mood and outlook. Like, uh, By feeling good due to the endorphins, I felt motivated and energetic as my adrenaline levels increased, meaning I felt ready to tackle all that the day had to throw at me. Thanks to this, not only was I on top of my day, but I was thriving and increased my productivity massively. The biggest challenge in doing an early workout was that it made an already busy morning even busier, something which may have had a lot of benefits but did mean I didn't give myself much flexibility. This actually leads on to the next habit that I sought to apply, which was to plan and review my schedule. This is a habit that people often fail to do, but it's equally one of the most helpful habits to get into. So each evening I got into the habit of planning my activities for the next day which I would then review after my workout each morning. This would help me to organise and structure each day, normally assessing and reviewing time I needed to complete each task and scheduling this into my diary. Initially, this was something of a challenge as I didn't always get my assessments right or I found I was getting interrupted by unplanned tasks through the day. However, rather than trying to give up on the process, I chose to use the experience to adjust how I assessed and scheduled my time which through a process of trial and error actually led me to improving how I assessed my tasks and ultimately increased my productivity and efficiency in ways I hadn't even imagined. For example, I particularly remember a day where I planned to do some development work during which I was asked to pick up an urgent issue that others were struggling to resolve. Beyond my planned task being left incomplete, I grew extremely frustrated at my inability to do what I planned. Rather than letting this get to me, I attempted to adjust my planning for particular tasks to give myself greater breathing room in my schedule, which allowed for interruptions if they came up. However, through the process, I equally found that I'm very much guilty of Parkinson's law in that I will use the time given to me to complete a task. So to try and effectively use my time, I would utilise the excess time I assessed for a task to complete less urgent but still important tasks. On the off chance I wasn't able to do these in this time, it wasn't a problem to reschedule them to another time, but if I had the opportunity to pick them up, I would do so and utilise my time most efficiently. This saw a massive increase in my productivity, which I recorded in the next habit I did, which was to journal. Honestly, while I've always advocated journaling, it wasn't a habit I enforced on myself over the years. Instead doing it on days I felt like I had something to share and not others. During the 30 days, I made sure to log and record thoughts and data on a daily basis, which helped me measure my output each day, but equally allowed me to remove thoughts and frustrations from my mind into writing, something which has been found to be highly effective in the field of psychology. What I particularly enjoyed about this process was recording my output and results every day as I could measure how my actions were benefiting my productivity and specifically my output. This had a compounding effect as it provided greater motivation to keep going the next day, knowing that I was seeing tangible results from my experience. The process of journaling, something I would usually do in the evenings, also provided me with the ideal platform to review and assess my day's activity, helping me to make adjustments where necessary, for example in how I scheduled my work which helped me to improve a process that was evolving in positive ways. Now there's one habit that I haven't discussed yet, but it's one I consider critical, which was each day I dedicated sometimes towards reading or learning. Successful people read and many successful people are considered some of the foremost experts in their field. 
this process of reading and expertise has a correlation in how they achieve their success. For me, I dedicated a minimum of 30 minutes to one hour each day to learn about a subject of interest to me. I gave myself flexibility on what the subject was, in that it could be something related to work, something of personal interest to me, or something beneficial to my well-being, but the key for me was to spend time learning. I know Kung Fu. This process accelerated my growth in ways I hadn't previously imagined, as I was able to learn material I wasn't knowledgeable in, and quickly found I was developing competency in the subject matter. Primarily, a lot of my reading material was focused on what I cover on this channel, and one area it helped me significantly was to build knowledge and find dedicated research and evidence to support the subjects I covered and the tips I offered. This actually had a profound effect, as through providing this research to support the material covered, I can give you greater confidence in why the techniques I offer work, and the examples of people who have used them in their own lives, including myself. My hope is that this also encourages you to follow up on what I offer, both learning further for yourself and doing your own research, but also testing out some of the ideas I offer in your own life. So now that we've gone through the habits I incorporated into my own life, I'd like to take a moment to share my thoughts. You may have already gathered, but the truth is that building these habits in my own life has been largely successful. The biggest improvements I've seen have been in my mental health and my productive output each day as many of the habits described specifically helped in these areas. However, some tangible and no less important improvements I've seen are in my health and confidence, as through the process I'm more acutely aware of taking care of my health and utilising my time more effectively. Now, that isn't to say that it's easy. One thing I found was that building habits was hard, and in truth I can't claim to have been 100% successful as I had days, especially early on where I simply struggled to follow the routine I set out for myself. If you do fail, don't give up. Never give up! Be kind to yourself and allow failures, instead learning from the experience and trying to do better the next time. Perseverance was critical for me, and it was through continuing on, even if the immediate evidence wasn't positive, that it eventually yielded results. And here I learnt another lesson that you need to do what works for you. For some, waking up at 5.30 won't work with their schedule and obligations, they may need to wake up earlier or later, which is absolutely fine. For example, Dwayne Johnson doesn't just follow a set routine, choosing to wake up 4 hours before he needs to be on set, so that he can get his morning workout in. If that means he needs to be on set at 6am, he'll be up and ready to go at 2am if necessary. The point is, do what works for you and the place you're in at this point in your life. It's a lesson I learned and I've changed some of the habits I've built, all of which I've chosen to keep in some capacity. For example, I don't do a full workout in the morning these days, as for me I find it more beneficial to do a quick 10-15 minutes of moderate exercise at the start of the day, before looking to do more intense workouts later on. I still get the benefits of being active in the morning, but I find it just helps ease into an already very busy start to the day. Overall, I can really say the experience has been highly beneficial. My mental health is as good as it's been in years, possibly ever, and my productivity based on my output has effectively tripled. The results have shown in both my personal and professional life, with people I know acknowledging the positive changes. But remember, I'm not finished here. Instead, I see this as a start to keep evolving the process and making incremental improvements to see greater benefits. Now if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out the video on screen now to get further tips on some of what's been discussed. Thanks for watching.